Hey, how's it going? This is Ralph, and in this video, I want us to work on styling pull quotes. So you may not have heard that term before, a pull quote. So I happen to have a browser page open already that has examples of pull quotes. That's not it right there. There it is. So let's look at this. So a pull quote, I know you've seen these before. This is on often on news websites, but when there's a lot of text, it's going to be a chunk of the text that's kind of emphasized, uh, styled differently than the rest of the content. And that's pull, P-U-L-L. -L. It's supposed to pull the reader in. It's supposed to attract them so that they will read more of the story and spend more time there. Pull quotes. So there's tons of different styles of this. So over the past few months, I have been... I read a lot of news, and whenever I see a pull quote that I think has been styled in an interesting way, but also in a way that we can style in our 295 class, I've been saving it. Well, 295 has started, so I took those images and sent them over, and I put them on here. Now, I know they're really tiny when you're looking at these directions. You may, I'm not sure if you can do this on your end, uh, if you can actually click and make these pictures bigger or not to see them. Probably not, because I'm only giving you view access. But I guess that's okay. My objective here is not that you duplicate these exactly or that we duplicate them exactly. My goal is that you get some inspiration and see some examples of pull quotes and then you try to use some techniques to do a similar kind of style. So our goal here is that we're going to work on some of these together. And I think we'll just do two of them together and then I'll have you do one on your own. and. Uh, and that'll be our participation activity, our class activity, so to speak. So um, so I've got the directions open right here, and basically I'm just making the video that I'll put a link in to this particular part. Now before I started this video, I did actually start a little bit of work. I have my code editor, code editor open. I've got a pull quotes.html file open, basic page, and I've got a CSS file with nothing on it. Um, I am going to ask that you style this to fit with your own portfolio theme so it has your colors and stuff like that. I don't have that myself. So let me just go ahead and do a font family Verdana. And um, that's pretty good there. And I guess I'll do some padding on the body. Eight pixels. Excuse me. And uh, just kind of see how that's looking. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, so I want to have a few examples all on one page. Let's see. Let's try to be a little bit creative with how we do this. Um, I'm going to create a little navigation menu on mine. So I'm in the body of my page. I've got my headline one. And I'll probably do a few things off camera, um, which I know are within your wheelhouse. So, But uh, for now, I'll go ahead and create a nav href and I'm going to do hashtags because I'm going to do uh, links within the page here and I'll do uh, pull sample one okay let's do that and I'll end up with two and three Great, uh, two and three, and looks good. And let's head down here, article h2 id equals pull sample one. Okay. Okay, so we'll get a little bit of formatting here. I'll do a little bit of styling off, uh, off screen. I want to have a nice horizontal menu going across the top so that a user can click on a particular menu item and it'll jump down to that particular sample. Okay, now within this, let's go ahead and do a few basics. And I know I don't even know which one I'm working on yet, but uh, we do know we want a couple things. We want the pull quote to stand out amongst regular text. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a paragraph of lorem ipsum text. Let's go ahead and do view and word wrap. That's alt Z. That's pretty good. We got a paragraph there. Copy, paste, and paste. And we'll play around with our middle paragraph. Now, how do we want to style this middle paragraph? You have a couple of options, really. You could just put a class on this. 
our goal is ultimately we don't want to have too much HTML change, but there are a few tags that you're probably not aware of that can actually use to uh, mark up this individual text. For instance, there is a block quote tag. And you notice I can do block quote and uh, opening and closing block quote tag. By the way, that little effect that I just did there when I changed one tag and it automatically changed the end tag, that is an add-in I have for VS Code. Very cool. I need to tell you about all my add-ins at some point. Um, now let's see where they're right over here. Extensions. And let's see, it's the auto rename tag. That one's pretty nice. So when you rename the opening tag, it'll automatically rename the closing tag. I need to do a separate video just reviewing these different uh, add-ons and stuff like that that come in handy. Let's turn that off for now. Okay, so block quote. Well, is it a block or an inline element? Well, based on its name, it's probably a block element. So block quote is another writing term and you've seen that maybe in your essays, in your research papers. That's when you indent the left, I'm trying to make sure I'm right on the camera here, the left and the right margins so that the quote, which, which is multiple lines, is indented more than the regular text. Um, so they have a tag for that, and we can use that to our advantage. The other tag, which comes in handy from time to time, I don't know if I'll need it yet, but I probably will need it on some other stuff, is there's just a Q tag. Yeah, so there's a Q tag, opening and closing Q tag, if you were going to make a quote. Now, by default, that's inline, but of course, with the power of CSS, we can make it look different ways. So I'm going to try to use both of these in certain situations. I'll leave that on there for now just so we can see what that looks like. But I'm using the block quote because our pull quotes are generally going to be multiple lines. And there could be a situation where we use both the block quote tag and the Q tag in conjunction. So let's start off with this for a moment. And I think that's pretty good. And of course, you can't really tell much on my HTML because I haven't really done any styling. I'll do that off camera. But before I start to do any styling, let's look over at the directions and see which one do I want to play around with first. And I'm probably just going to do these top three. I think these top three here are probably the most intricate. And so those would be uh, good, or at least I'll do these first two. These first two would be, I think, would get us all the basic skills. And then I would encourage you to do maybe this other one up here or one down here or something like that. So let's see. So I'm looking over here in the far left. And I can see, I know it's, it's small and it's blurry and stuff like that. That's okay. But I can definitely tell that the pull quote is a larger font and it's a bolder font than the regular text. Now, of course, you can also see there's some top margin and bottom margin on that. And what's interesting, of course, is it's got these little corners, these little maroon or burgundy corners on there. Well, those are going to be an interesting challenge for us, and those are going to require pseudo elements, which is going to be part of this activity. I want you to utilize pseudo elements on at least two of your examples. One of them could be the one you're doing with me right now. So, and you may have, depending on when you took CIS 195, you may have tried a little bit of pseudo element in your 195 class. It just came up last fall, but if you took a previous 195, it definitely didn't come up. So let's see what we can do here. Um, okay, so let's start small and let's focus on the things we know that we can definitely do very easily. And I think that's with the top and bottom margin and also making that font a little bit, actually maybe top left and right margins, and making that font a little bit bigger and a little bit bolder than the surrounding text. Okay, so there's my block quote. Cool, I've got that. Let's head over. And you know what, I need to mark this Oh, this is pretty good. I've got this ID up there for, I need to write this properly. Pull sample one, okay, I've got that. And since my block quote is down here, you know what, I really should have my ID in the article. So now it's gonna be easier for me to designate the children or the descendants within my pool sample one up there. Cool, so I've got that. Of course, I've got auto save on. Let's give this a try. Pool sample one. In fact, before I go too much further, I'm gonna do a thin border on this. Two pixels, solid, and uh, 
PC, very light color, or hardly be noticeable, I'm sure. And let's just see how that looks. Yep, very thin border on there. I don't even want it to stand out, but I just wanted to use that so that I can make sure I get plenty of margin. Let's do um, 24 pixels top and bottom, eight pixels left and right. Get a little bit of space around that. That looks good. And I think all of my paragraphs, I'm gonna do this up here. All of my paragraphs and all of my block quotes, hopefully this won't come back to haunt me, but of course we can always change it if it does. Let's go ahead and make sure they have a nice margin on there too. How about just a margin bottom of 16 pixels? A little bit of spacing there, great. And I think I'm also gonna do headline twos. Remember, that's called a grouped selector when we wanna style different elements the same way. All right, I think that's pretty good. Pretty satisfied with that. Now, this would look better if it was multiple lines. I don't necessarily wanna to create too much more text on there. <clears throat> So if my web page was just a little bit narrower, there we go, we'll start to get the example right there so I can see how that's looking. So I'll just keep that page open off to the side. Let's go ahead and get back to my code editor. Hmm. Did I close it? That's weird. I guess I closed it. All right, but I'm back open again, got that. Let's see, I'll just do a Windows right. And let's bring this over here so it's a little bit spaced a little bit better. Cool. All right, now let's take this one particular block quote. So this is my pool sample one space block quote. Now what do we want to start off here? Well, we definitely know the font is going to be a bit, be a bit bigger. 120%? I don't know. We'll try it. Bold? Or do I want to do bolder? Let's try bold first and see how that looks. And I need to hit go live again because I must have exited out. So let's do that. There we go. That's actually looking pretty good. I'm curious what bolder will do for me. And if it changed, I didn't quite notice. Go back to bold. Just kind of looking over here to the left. It's saved. I've refreshed. Okay, so no difference. Okay, but still, I've got the font size and stuff like that. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Now, in my example, though, I'm going to push this, drag this over here so it's a little closer to my working page. So, okay, it looks like there's pretty big margins on there. I might come back and clean that up. But I'm really curious about these corners. That's going to be our biggest challenge here. How do we get those corners on there? And by all means, work ahead of me if you're so inclined. What do you think I will do next? Pull sample one, block, quote, colon, colon, before. Let's just work on the before for a moment. Okay. So this is how we generally create our pseudo elements. We use the before or after um, selector. And I'm gonna create some content. And my content is simply gonna be an empty set of quotes. It's invisible content. Now you could put characters in here. In fact, I'll show you real quick. We could have an uh, whatever. And by doing that, that content is gonna show up. Let's see if I get it to show up here. Pull sample one, I've got that properly. Block quote before. I think everything is saved properly. Let's refresh. Now I'm not seeing it show up here. Let's make sure, color red. There it is. I, I just didn't notice it uh, mixed in with my lorem ipsum text, but there it is right there. In fact, uh, just to be cute with this, I'll go ahead and take that and do the after. Cool. Well, this makes it really obvious. We can easily add content before and after an existing element. And what's great about this, of course, is I haven't had to change the structure of the HTML. 
Let's turn my word wrapping back on. View, toggle word wrap. There we go, it's just the same old HTML. In fact, as few changes as I can make to the HTML, the better. Okay, so if I can do that, what else can I do? Let me just mess with the before for a little bit. Let me go back to an empty set of quotes. Okay, so what looks like, all right, everything's gone. But let's do this, display block. And I'll set the width to be, um, and I don't know, I'm just guessing here. I'll try, let's do 80 pixels and a height of 80 pixels. Now I can't do color red because it's not a font, but I could do background color of red. Got our width, we have our height. There it is, now it's showing up over there. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So let's look at our sample for a moment. Well, this isn't, this definitely is not a block, but what do you think is creating this shape? What would be your guess here? What should I write next? Border left. Let's do 16 pixels. Solid. And I'll do, um, I don't know what color that is, but ooh, can I just write burgundy? Is that going to work? No, I don't think it's going to work. How about maroon? Ooh, that looks like that'll work. Okay, let's see what happens with this. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Okay, let's try border top. 16 pixels solid maroon. I'm waiting a second here. Of course, I can speed this up. Control S to save. All right, that's looking pretty good. What if instead of 16 pixels, this was more like 32? And 32. And instead of my background color being red, what if my background color was transparent? Hmm. Pretty pretty interesting. Looks like I'm starting to get that shape there. Now, of course, that shape looks a lot smaller than mine, so I can dial this back a bit. Maybe it's only 50 pixels and 50 pixels. Okay. Now, clearly the relationship between this little corner bracket and the text is not matching up with my example here. So there should be a little bit more space involved. So let's go back for a moment here and pull sample one block quote. Let's put in some really big margin left on here. How about if I do a margin left of 100 pixels and a margin right of 100 pixels. And I see I have a typo there, so let's go ahead and fix that up. Okay, great. So that kind of squeezes things in a little bit. That's cool. But then I can go to this content, this pseudo element. Why is it a pseudo element? Pseudo means pretty much fake, right? So this is a fake element. It's because it's an element that I'm working with. I'm styling it. I'm giving it width and height. I'm giving it borders. <coughs> I'm giving it color. However, the element doesn't exist in the HTML. It's a fake element. It's a pseudo element. All right, so I've got all of that. However, let's go a little bit further. Let's um, position relative, and I'm gonna push it over to the left, and I could probably do the math to figure this out. I know my pseudo element is only 50 pixels wide, so if I pushed it over negative 60 pixels, that should be more than 10 pixels over. Let's see if I can get it to refresh, there we go. And it looks like I can go a little bit further. Let's try something like 90. Ooh, I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. And, hmm, maybe I want it to be, do I want it to be down a little bit? Let's try this. What if I do top, something like 20 pixels? Let's see what that does. Yeah, that pushes it downward a little bit. If I did a negative top, that would push it upward. I actually like that a lot. I think it's gonna look pretty darn good there. So, using the techniques here, we just tried for this before, can we do this for after? I bet we can, so let's see. Content, empty set of quotes, 
display block width 50 pixels, height 50 pixels. If you're wondering, could I have doubled up a little bit on this? I certainly could have. Could have done a group selector, comma, and then done some things in common. And then of course, the things that are different are gonna be like the, the border and the position, but that's okay. A little redundancy is okay, especially if you're aware of it. What else do I need to do? Background color transparent. The default background color is probably okay, but I want to acknowledge that I'm setting that. This one's going to be a border right, 32 pixels, solid maroon, and a border bottom, 32 pixels, solid maroon. Position relative. Well, before I worry about adjusting it, let me see where it is by default. Oh yeah, it's in a weird spot. So this is not gonna be positioned left and top. What if I start off with something like right? Hmm. You know what I think I need to do here? Instead of just nudging this out of position, this is where position absolute could come in handy. So I'm gonna change this position relative to position absolute. Now that's gonna probably temporarily mess things up for me. And that's because my parent, which is the block quote, needs to be position relative. So let's see what that does. Okay, so now that the parent is position relative, the children, which by the way, these little um, pseudo elements are children of the parent block quote. Now I can have a little bit more control on them. So I can do something like right zero pixels and bottom zero pixels to start. Let's see how that looks. That gets them roughly where I want. So now I can start to play around. In fact, let me adjust these to zero and zero and see their default location. Position relative is great when you just want to nudge something, but position absolute is nice when you really want to have ultimate control on it. Um, now, of course, it could be that one of them was gonna be position relative. There's no rule that says both of these need to be position absolute. So I could have done position relative just for the before, which was working out pretty darn nice for me. But let's go with this for a moment. Now, the other thing that can make our lives a little bit easier so we can understand what's going on, let me put a temporary outline on here, two pixels solid, and I'll just do green. I wanna put a temporary outline on my block quote. And so we can really see where these little pseudo elements are showing up. Okay, cool. So let's go to the before one. And I'm going to go to the left, negative, let's do negative 50 pixels. That should be just a little bit of overlap. I think I might be okay with that. And let's move it upward, negative 40 pixels. Let's see how that looks. Not bad, but let's try to be balanced a little bit. Negative 50, all right, that could be okay. I know I'm overlapping some content, but we'll fix that up soon enough. Now let's go to this bottom right one, which is my after. I'm gonna to go to the right, 50 pixels, and the bottom, 50 pixels. Oops, that's not what I want. I'm going to the right, 50 pixels, the bottom, I guess to move it downward. I need negative 50, there we go. And the right is gonna to have to be negative 50. Okay, I think that can work, what do you think? Let's look at the sample for a quick moment. Yeah, there's just more space above and below. So if I head over to my block quote and I do even more margin top and bottom. Let's see, I've got margin left and I've got margin right. Margin top, 100 pixels. Margin bottom, 100 pixels. Probably a little bit too much there. Let's dial it back a bit to 8080. While I'm here, let's get rid of that outline. That was just there as a visual aid in the short term. Hmm, I might be pretty satisfied with this. Yeah, now of course the bottom right one's always gonna look farther away from the content at the top left just because my text is left aligned. So um, 
at a glance, visually, that doesn't appeal to me, but it is kind of like our mock-up. So I guess we're okay with that for now. Now, I'm pretty happy with that. So I think we'll go ahead and call this one done. But the thing to keep in mind is, is that we were able to create this quite easily with pseudo elements, and it required hardly any editing to our HTML. Notice it was just the use of block quotes. If this was a regular paragraph, look at that, closing tag changes, my paragraph is just a normal paragraph. But as soon as I make this a block quote, it gets the styling that I want for that block quote. Very, very interesting. Cool. Okay, so let's see, what else do we have on here? Let's try one that might be a little bit more challenging for us. What about this second one under Gizmodo? It's an interesting kind of blog, a bunch of tech articles there. So in this one, notice they have a, a blue border on the bottom, they have a blue border on the top, and then they have a little quote image right there on the middle. That looks kind of neat. And the text, of course, is looks like it's grayer than the surrounding text. It's a little bit larger than the surrounding text. And it's also italicized. I can tell that from that small picture. OK, so let's make that our second example. So I'm on the HTML already. In fact, I'm going to zoom out real quick just so you can kind of see an overview of this. I'm going to take my entire article, copy that paste it. And this is going to be pool sample. Oops. Pool sample number two, pool quote sample two. And I think I'm pretty good with that. Block quote, block quote. All right. Let's zoom back in so you can see what I did here. So I just duplicated my article. It's the, my new one though has a new ID. And of course, there's a new headline too. But otherwise, it's three paragraphs. In the middle paragraph is a block quote. Hmm, OK. So just kind of get a visual aid of this. Now, oh, the, the text is centered too. I can tell that here. We do have noticeable margin left and right. All right, all right, all right. Let's see what we've got here. There's my pull quote sample too. Let's head over to the CSS for a moment. Pool sample two. Let me go ahead and give it a similar border. In fact, I'll just copy, I'll just do a group select up here. There we go, just so we can have that thin border, just to kind of give it some structure, and I can kind of see that this is one unique section down here. Pool sample two. All right, and let's mess around with the block quote in there. Now there's a couple things we know right away, of course. We know about margins and borders and stuff like that. So let's give it a shot. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and I guess in no particular order, but I'll do margins first. I'm gonna go ahead and do margin um, 24 pixels top and bottom. And I'll do something like 80 pixels left and right. Let's see how that looks. Okay, clearly, you know, and that's affecting. It's right down here in the lower left. Don't forget, I've got autosave on my editor, and I've got, the, of course, this uh, go live, which means it's auto refreshing after a second or two on my web page. So I'm seeing the update right away down there. Okay, that looks pretty good. What about those borders? Let's try a border top, two pixels solid. It was a pretty nice shade of blue. Um, HSL A, do you want to do that? Hue, saturation, light. I don't know the numbers. I'll start off with 100, um, 50%, 100%. Let me just do HSL. We don't need to do semi-transparent or anything like that. Uh, that's giving me a white there. Let's go to a shade of blue. Jump right over there. Oh, it's jumping over to RGB. HSL. There we go. Okay, so that's not that's not too shabby. So hue, saturation, and light. It's a pretty shade of blue. I'll go with that one. So I'm using 194 comma 97 percent comma 42 percent for hue, saturation, and light, which is of course a CSS function. Um, I'm going to do the same thing with border bottom. 194, 97 percent. 
Okay, so we've got those borders on there. Now, of course, if I want more space in between the border and the text, that's padding. So I can do padding of 16 pixels top and bottom and zero pixels left and right, and that's gonna create more space when it refreshes. There we go. More space above and below. If I wanna exaggerate that, I just do a bigger number. 32 pixels, perhaps. See how that looks. Okay, I'm gonna do this real quick just so that my page is up a little bit higher. Let's do a padding bottom, 500 pixels. That'll allow me to scroll this up a little bit higher so we can focus just on that uh, pull quote sample too. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now there's only so many things we can do here. We might have to get an image involved. Um, this is looking pretty good, but we do have this little quotation mark up there. Now, sometimes this can be created with CSS, um, and I'm not saying you couldn't create this with CSS. Obviously, we know how to create a disk, a circle with CSS. We can do that, um, and we could probably do quote marks too, but it's not unusual for people to incorporate an image here. And I think I wanna do that. Since I didn't use an image in the first one, it might be interesting to do an image here. So let me just do a Google search for quote mark. And images, in fact, let me do a file type PNG. And it doesn't matter, you know, obviously it doesn't matter which one we go for necessarily. Basic one right there. I'm actually, I am looking for ping in, intentionally because I did want to have a transparent background. Um, and there's a good chance this may have that. If I right click, Save link as, is that gonna work? Nope, don't wanna do that. Save image as, this may be what I want. Maybe, baby, baby. So let's see, I'm under my web dev too. Let's go to images. Quote marks one. I'm gonna call it quote marks one just in case down the road we use multiple quote marks. And let's see, this may be satisfactory. It's, uh, I know it's gray, but I'll deal with that and uh, I should be able to put it on a disc easy enough and position it. Um, yeah, ooh, it's a nice little bright blue ones there too. Those are pretty cool. Plain old square ones. Yeah, lots of good ones out there, so. If you're at all handy on Photoshop or an image editor, nothing to keep you from making your own quote marks on there too, right? We could probably even do it with regular quote marks in HTML, and then of course use a Google font or something like that, a custom font to make them nice and styled. So that's a reasonable way to go too. But I'm gonna give this picture a try. Let's see what happens. So let's see, jump back over to my example. Now let's see, where do I wanna put that? I think I'm gonna go, Let's see, that's sample one. I want to be on sample two. Pull sample two. Block quote, I'll do the before. Content, empty set of quotes. Once again, an invisible pseudo element. Okay, creating the pseudo element. I'm looking at my clock here because the uh, next uh, division playoff game with the Baltimore Ravens and the Buffalo Bills starts up in 15 minutes or so. So let's see if I can finish this second one up in that time. Okay, so that's going to do that. Of course, I want to do display block. And for now, let's give this an outline so I can visualize it. Oh, I like this. Right after the block, let's go ahead and give it some width and height. Um, we'll just start off with 80 pixels by 80 pixels. And let's see where that shows up. So remember, I'm looking over here at my pull quote sample too. So okay, that's definitely not where I want it to be, but I can see that it has structure. Now, how can I get those quote marks in there? Background image URL. Let's see, I'm in my styles folder. So let's go up to my images folder. And then my quote marks one, 
course, background repeat, no repeat, background size, I guess I can do 100% um, because I want them to fill up the space regardless of what size I have there. Now clearly these are wider than they are taller, so let me go ahead and adjust my height a bit until it looks good. That looks pretty good. They look a little pixelated, a little blurry, but I guess I won't get too bothered by that. Now, of course, this could be smaller. This could be something like 50 pixels in width, and that's going to make the background image smaller at some point. I'll do some like 35 here. There we go. I'll get a little tinier. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. And let's see. Actually, you know, if I want to make this a disk, though, it would be better if they were a square, if it was square shaped. So let's go back to 50 pixels. And then I can do something like border radius 50%. That'll make that disk shape that I want. That may not be showing up here because I'm using an outline instead of a border. So let's change this out to border. See if that works for me. There we go. But now you can definitely see that my quote marks. Are my quote marks even the right position? Let's see, where's my example? Yeah, yeah, I guess they are. The little tails are up at the top, so I guess that's okay. Who knows if it matters? It probably does matter, right? Because if the quote mark is to the left or above the quote, you probably need to have that certain quote mark where the little tails are facing upward as opposed to facing downward. So obviously with a pull quote, you have a little bit of artistic license. You don't always have to have two quote marks. Ooh, although I do see quote marks on there too. There's individual quote marks on that. We might have to fix that up. So let's see. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with this, but clearly my background position needs to be just a little bit. Hmm. Now, if we did something like 50% or center, that would probably do it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now, clearly I didn't have a true PNG image because I can actually see the faint gray background on there. I'm going to try not to get too bothered by that. I just needed to hunt around more for a better quality image, but I think that's good for this demo, certainly. However, definitely based on my example, I want to get these quote marks centered and over that top border. So that's really my objective here with this. Hmm, how can we do that? Well, if our item is positionable, once again, I'm going to do a position absolute, and I'll start with top zero, left zero. There we go. And of course, if I'm going to do that, the parent should be position relative or position absolute. It's okay to position absolute within an absolute position parent. We just don't do that as often. Okay, that's position relative. Oops, I was just looking at the wrong one. There it is. Okay, so now how do I get it? Well, let's do this part. This is going to be pretty easy, right? Well, it's not where I want it, so zero pixels is not good, but I don't know what the width of the page is going to be. So, of course, I can try 50%. Actually, that's not what I want to do there. Let's keep that at zero. Let's do the left of 50%. That's going to move it over, a little bit too far over. And then for the top, well, I know this thing is 50 pixels tall. That'll be easy. I can just move it negative 25 pixels, and that's going to move it upward. That looks pretty good. It's just over too far to the right. So in addition to the position, I'm also going to do a transform translate x. Based on this syntax, Translate X must also be a CSS function. Whenever you see this syntax of the CSS value having a set of parentheses like URL or HSL, that's the sign of a CSS function. So translate X, and I'm going to move it over negative 50%. Now this negative 50% relates to the width 
of the actual element. So 50 pixels of width, moving it over negative 50% is the same thing as negative 25 pixels in this example. And that's getting that little quote mark where I want. Now, if I just take my HSL, copy that and replace the green, then at the very least, even though I don't like that little gray background, I can see that, all right, at least those quote marks have the right spot. And of course, if I wanted more space on there, I could do a little bit more margin top or padding top, I mean, a little more padding top on that block quote. So block quote, right now I have padding top of 32 pixels. Oh, no, 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 where is it at? I must have it on here somewhere. Oh, that's, I'm getting my twos and my ones mixed up. So I have padding top and bottom of 32 pixels. Well, if I just want to change the top, hmm, let's see. I guess let's do it this way. Come on. I'll just do this. Let's do padding top of 48 pixels, right of zero, bottom 32, left to zero. Top right, bottom left. That gives me a little bit more padding on the top than the bottom, and that's pretty good. Let's see how this is looking up here. We had a couple other things I remember. The text is centered. That should be pretty easy for us to do. So we just go to our block quote. Text align center. It's definitely larger. Font size, I'll do 120%, which is 20% larger than the default. And I can see font style italic. That's definitely true. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now the other tricky thing, of course, and I know there's an easy solution to this, is that our block quote actually has some quotation marks in there. Hmm. Well, the problem is to do this dynamically would actually be a little bit tough because I've already used one block quote before. So I can't just slap on another block quote before if I wanted to put quotation marks on there. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, so hmm, what's a really good solution to something like that? Hmm, I don't know if there is a really good solution. So you might have to fill me in if you think of something creative here. So here's my problem. I would like to get quote marks before and after this paragraph. And of course, the easy solution is to just do quote marks before and after. I was wondering if there was a way I could do this, though, without requiring the web developer to write those quote marks in. Could we do them more automated? Of course, we could have done a block quote um, after and then content colon quotation marks in order to do those. But um, I guess that's OK for now until we think of something a little bit more efficient. And when I say efficient, I mean it requires less editing of the actual HTML. It sure is nice if a uh, web person can just go to the content and change out the paragraph to a block quote and get the exact styling they want. So if this paragraph was a block quote, then we would have two of those right there. And that's all it would take. But I think we're in pretty good shape. And it looks, you know, it's not, it's a different color, of course, but I think it looks pretty darn good. And obviously font color changing to a gray would be easy enough for us to do. All right, I think I'm gonna leave you with just these two. However, I want you to do three of these. Now, what would be the most interesting one for you? I think it would be this one over here on the top right. You could use the exact same quote image, the little quotation symbols that you got before. Look at this one. I know it's tiny and it's tough to see, but clearly the text is blue. It's not italic, it's, it's, it's dark blue. There's a very obvious left margin, but notice the right margin is no different than the regular paragraphs, okay? Now, the other quirky thing with this one is that I see some extra text down here that's been formatted. This is probably from the author within the block quote. This is an interesting challenge for you, and I'd like you to tackle this one. So, of course, the quote symbols are over here on the left. It doesn't matter if they're green or not. Don't worry about that. However, if you used a font, then you'd be very easy to change those into green. But what about that author? Let me at least start you up on this one. Let's see. I'm going to zoom out a bit on this. Pull quote sample two. I'm going to copy that, paste it. Now this is going to be number three, number three. Zoom back in. 
Okay, so we've got our pool sample, our block quote there for pool sample three, but this one's got, looks like an author. Let's see, can I zoom in on that one a bit? At least for the short term. Yeah, look at that. So we've got our quote there, and within the quote, there's a paragraph, class equals author. Actually, I'm going to do class equals byline. Let's make this a little bit challenging for you. I'm going to take this one, and I see it's Todd Baldwin. And then we'll do another paragraph, class equals byline. 27-year-old self-made millionaire. All right, so be it. Okay, I'm gonna leave this HTML like this. I'm gonna encourage you to write your HTML the same way I did. So this block quote, notice it contains two paragraphs after the main quote. Okay, class equals byline, class equals byline. Can you style these two bylines separately, differently, even though they have the same class? Hmm, can you do that? because it looks like it needs it in the sample. Okay, so that's your challenge there. I know this is a uh, participation activity, so I'm not looking for perfection, but I'm looking for effort. So of course, what I want to see on your example is that you followed along pretty closely. One of your pull quote samples has these uh, little corner brackets, nice big bold corner brackets on there, kind of like a picture frame, right? Something like that. And then pull quote sample two has a top and bottom border with a quote symbol right up there at the top. For pull quote three, you're gonna work ahead and uh, see if you can do this one. Now, if this one seems too tough for you, then obviously, let's uh, resize this again. Pop that now, let's move that up there somewhere. I got several pictures on here. There's a few simpler ones. Obviously, there's one with just a border. There's one down there with some center text. This one also looks like it has author information at the bottom too, which is good. The reason I'm stressing that I'd like you to practice either this top right one here or this bottom one here is because you're gonna have a quiz coming up where I'm gonna challenge you to do something like that. So it could be a pretty good one to try. So, so give that a shot, okay? Like I said, I'm gonna stop my video here. Uh, there's my examples, and for at least for the first two, and go ahead and uh, give a shot at that third one. Talk to you later.